Movies on video cassette. Welcome to Strange Glow Video. Guys, I'm eating junk and watching rubbish. We're oozing with VHS, horror, nostalgia, and more. New better block glow in the dark. After it comes to videotape, you can get a glow in the dark hand puppet from the movie Casper. And now, your hosts, Alec, Justin, and Nick. Hey, you're not allowed to rent here anymore. Yeah! Hey, welcome back to Strange Glow Video. My name is Justin. With me, as always, is my co-host, Alec. How you doing? Apes together. Circle jerk. Apes. Apes. Apart. Masturbate. So if that wasn't a clue, a context clue, we're going to talk about Planet of the Apes. Specifically, the last couple of movies here in the modern trilogy, which is uh, about to expand. So we're going to talk Rise, Dawn, and War. Yeah. In that That's order. Gonna... But not like, you know, we're not going to spend an hour on each or anything. we got time for that. Maybe about 10, 20 minutes on each. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I don't we're not gonna like do like crazy detailed breakdown analysis and shit. So I have some notes, but nothing crazy. So we'll start with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which has the now canceled James Franco as this little star, you know? Yeah, which is interesting, right? You know, he turned out to be uh kind of a scumbag, which is unfortunate because he's in a lot of things that I like watching. That's not to say that I like it because of him, but he just happens to be in these things. If that makes sense. Yeah. Same. So. Spider Man, Pineapple Express, other stuff. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I don't know what the hell happened with my camera there. I was wondering if it was my internet or your camera, but. No, I think my watch switched my camera view. Interesting. I was playing uh, some. Uh, some PlayStation before we started this, so. Oh, fun. So, uh, so stars John Lithgow. Yeah, he's great in this. I enjoy his character. I wish he had a little more screen time than he does, but he has just enough to kind of convey his character. Yeah. I think this is as close as we're ever going to get to a Harry and the Henderson sequel. Yeah, I think that's... Actually, that's something that should really happen nowadays. Like, they should do that. <laughs> While well, Lithgow still has time, right? O old Sasquatch and old uh, old Harry and old John Lithgow together. Yeah, John Lithgow retires to a cabin in the woods, and he just hangs out, like, playing PlayStation and, like, barbecuing and grilling and camping and doing kind of silly stuff with him. Actually, I'd like to see a him and Harry road trip movie where they rent, like, an RV and go cross-country. Uh, be amazing. Go, where, they, where they go squatching, you know, they go, they go and do the whole thing looking for squatch. Yeah. Uh, that'd be awesome. Um, no, let's so, see. <clears throat> what was this? 2011 for rise. Is that when this yeah. was? So 2011 rise of the planet of the apes. This one was kind of a reboot. They hadn't really gone this territory before. So I do enjoy this one quite a bit. I think it's kind of fresh to see it kind of like have a modern take and where it starts. Ooh. Yeah, this is conquest of the planet of the apes. Um, the first to feature the character of Caesar. Um, so okay. in conquest of the planet of the apes, there are. It's sort of very similar to rise of the planet of the apes. Rise of the planet of the apes is very heavily inspired by this movie. It completely changes ideas. Like he, Caesar's like a circus monkey in this and stuff, and gets switched out with. Uh, at the end of the last movie, I think it is. Caesar is switched out with a different baby after two of the only apes that survived from the explosion at the, of the Earth and the end of be, beneath the planet of the apes. I have confused the damn titles. Yeah, that's the so. Right. That's and then okay. conquest of the planet of the apes. That's when two of the apes time travel back to the 70s. It takes up where that left off. Two, plant, two of them got off and accidentally time traveled back to the 70s. And then they had a smart ape. And then they, she switches it out with an ape at the uh, at a circus, essentially. And then takes oh, okay. that ape and gets that dumb ape killed. 
and just throws it off a bridge after it's killed and shit. <laughs> it's fucking wild. And uh, so Roddy McDowell, you recognize that name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Roddy McDowell, who played Cornelius in the original movies, the first two, I think. He plays Caesar in this one. And he also okay. plays Peter Vincent in Fright Night. That's awesome. Hell yeah, it is. The original Caesar. <laughs> Peter Vincent. So, yeah, I know, I know they took a lot of inspiration from that original series of movies from Planet of the Apes, right? Which those are... I mean, I think the first one's very well respected in regards to, like, its place in cinematic history, right? You know, Charlton Heston, get your hands off me, you damn dirty apes, Statue of Liberty ending, all that kind of shit that's been, like, spoofed so many times. Yeah, and people people have mixed feelings on these. There's also an animated series from the mm -hmm. 70s, and I think these movies all pretty much came out pretty quickly, too. Like, first one, 68, maybe 69 or 70 is the second one. The fifth one came out by like 77 and that one I think was like the later one. So, and people like that one a lot too, which is kind of like how, uh, war for the planet of the apes and Dawn were it's battle for the planet of the apes. And it's essentially in that same time period after Caesar has grown up and read a, led a revolution, which, uh, yeah, he does in conquest. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I haven't really watched a lot of the originals. You have the VHS, so have you watched all those recently too? No, I haven't watched them recently. I've watched them all once. And okay. I want to go back. I just don't have enough time to go back and rewatch them all before the new one to like actually sit down and do a review of them and stuff, but I'll get around to it eventually maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so I think rise of the planet of the apes to me was a fun way to reboot this because you're not going into what you expect right you know they did something fairly fresh even though they'd kind of already done that in the original series but i think there's a lot of people that hadn't seen those i think a lot of people be like oh planet of the apes yeah i've seen that but yeah. they haven't watched all the sequels because obviously some people only seen the tim burton reboot remake yep <laughs> And that was an interesting film as well. So, and uh, what, what's burned in my head is the ape, Abraham Lincoln at the end of the movie. Yeah. So that's a weird, weird film. Yeah. So, uh, Andy Serkis is Caesar, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Um, Brian Cox, Tom He's Felton. Yeah, the casting for this first movie was great. Like, I think it was awesome, you know? Yeah, um, what's his face? Uh, Tyler Labean, he plays Dale in Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. He's great. He's, he has a smaller role, but it's interesting. He's the one who spreads the virus. Yeah. Which is another thing that comes from, I think, Conquest. The virus that spreads, but it kills dogs and cats. And then... Uh, apes become domesticated pets essentially because of that. Oh, okay. Super weird shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously at the beginning of Rise, we see Caesar's mother. You know, she's in there and James Franco is really working on trying to figure out this cure for Alzheimer's because his dad has it. And so, like, that's his motivation in this story, right? Which starts off pretty solid. Um, the mother it's becomes fine. aggressive. They blame it on the, you know, they blame it on the, I'm assuming this is a man-made virus is kind of how they imply this. Yeah. It's the AZ, uh, 112, I think that first, and then later on the second time they're doing it a couple years later, it's the 113. So the 113 yep. is the one that actually ends up killing everybody. Yeah. But the 112 may have been the perfect version. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. And then I did like that plot element like where they're like no the she was just pregnant and so that's why she was lashing out was to protect her child and then they just play it down like oh shit we just fucked that up and then there's james franco dad monkey monkey dad yep <clears throat> um i do like how they introduce all these actual characters though and they are characters that go on like maurice the orangutan is my personal favorite 
Uh-huh. Um, and then there's, I think that gorilla is called Buck. He dies in this movie. And then, oh, fuck, Rocket. Rocket's the one who's like the muscular ass ape who rips his shirt off and is like alpha ape until yeah. Caesar's like, I'm actually smart and you're a dumb bitch. And me and gorilla, this gorilla are going to beat you to death unless you say you're my bitch. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty intense. I did like the animal sanctuary there, like, you know, kind of gives you the thing that it's not what, you know, the public probably thinks it is, right? It's pretty shitty conditions in there. Uh, not very well kept, looks uncomfortable. So ran by assholes. Yeah. Like Brian Cox isn't 100% terrible, but like he has shitty people working for him. And for sure. like he's it's by no time. means, a, he's by no means a saint either. So. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Felton plays his son. So that's why he's so horrified later when he sees the footage. He goes in and is like, What's what are the police here? And he walks in and the first thing he sees is the footage of his son getting electrocuted to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty intense. Um, no, I really like this this one in general. I think this is actually my favorite of these three. I I you would think because of the elements of the other ones and the imagery, I would think those would be my favorites. But I think this is my favorite, although I think the best one is probably Dawn, but we'll get there. Mm -hmm. As far as rewatchability goes, like uh, to me, this feels pretty fresh still, like as a concept to start here. Um, it's a good animal rights movie, too. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed Rise the most. And then to your point, I feel like. Dawn is probably the best overall movie, but as far as my personal favorite, it's got to be, it's got to be Rise. Now, War has its moments. There's some things I really like in there, but there's also some stuff there that you're just like, I kind of see where you're going with all that. So, well, that's the thing. Yeah, some of it like separates. Some of the choices they make in these three movies make it so it can't fit in chronologically whatsoever. Although, I guess some of the later Planet of the Apes original five movies kind of do that too with the time travel shit but like yeah there's an argument you could make um this new kingdom of the planet of the apes takes place 300 years after these movies yeah and i think that'll be fresh as well because like it's not just going to continue on you know they kind of killed caesar off in the last one and obviously he had that single son survive so there's they're thinking uh, about doing a trilogy from what i understand so we'll probably get introduced yeah. to some central characters that are you know, interesting. Yep, and then Nova's another character that's back, obviously named after Nova from uh, War of the Planet of the Apes here. Which is named after Nova from... Uh, is it the original Planet of the Apes, or is it the sequel? Uh, I think it is the original. Nova from the original, yeah. That's the little girl mm -hmm. that he rides off, that he's at the end with, yeah. Yeah. Um. So... There's lots of references to that stuff. Um, anyway, Dawn. Let's talk Dawn. This is the first one with Matt Reeves directing, which everybody raves and calls this the Matt Reeves trilogy, even though he didn't direct the first one, which is my favorite, ironically. Yeah, no, Matt Reeves is a fine director. Like, I don't have anything against him. Um, I enjoy some of what he's done, some of his stuff there's obviously criticism for, but, you know, he's doing good work overall. I like this movie. Ten years later, you get that opening and it kind of explains the virus. That's fun to me. I like seeing that the collapse of society is always fun in movies. Yeah, I thought they did it really well. They didn't drag it on. It didn't need to be like a 20-minute opening piece. It's kind of like interstitched with the credits. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I would have preferred to be a little bit different in this one would have just been to see what happened to you know, like if you're going to kill off the virus creator, you know, James Franco's character, I would have liked to have seen some reference to that. You know, did that asshole die early on? Did he do something else? You know, I yeah. think they could have done a better job of vilifying him for the second one. I didn't but, think they needed to vilify him. Uh, Caesar has that moment where he calls him a good man. Yeah. That's, the, the vilifying aspect would come with that. He did test on apes. That is yeah. my thing. Like, 
yeah, he created this virus, but he was trying to cure Alzheimer's. It wasn't just like evil assholery. Now you could argue that it's like, ah, oh, man, wasn't meant to meddle, that type of shit, but whatever, dude. That's what science is. Yeah. But um, so Andy Circus obviously back. You know who plays his wife, Cornelius? Or Cornelia? No, who did the mocap for that in the voice? Judy Greer did the mocap. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they had actual a bunch of mix of strictly mocap actors and other actors play a different bunch of different apes. Um, I think some of them were actually recast in this one, but we also get Jason Clark, who was in uh, the worst, my in my opinion, the worst Terminator movie, and uh, Gary Oldman, obviously. Yeah, so the worst Terminator movie, Genesis. Um... I hated him as John Connor. I like his character in this, and I really liked him in the Pet Cemetery remake. I don't even necessarily have an opinion on his performance or him as John Connor, but how they wrote it and what they did with the character, I have I did definitely take issue with. I think he could have been an okay John Connor, but the problem is we've seen 400. Literally every Terminator movie has a different John Connor. Yeah, and, and I Termin think by that... Terminator 2 has two, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just to me, I just feel like that was not a good decision on his behalf. Like I understand like going for that role cause it's a big name franchise and everything like that. But I just feel like I can appreciate him when I'm not thinking about that Terminator role. Cause to me like that kind of fucked up my opinion of him. And so when I watch other stuff, I'm like, Oh yeah, he is good. If I was watching it and watch these Terminator movies to rank them, like to rank the John Connors, that'd be an interesting uh, video, but uh, based on their performances and not the movies that they're in. He might win out over Christian Bale. He might win out over the guy in three, although I have a love for three that other people don't. I think it's highly underrated. I'm sorry. And then I guess Dark Fate's just back to Edward Furlong again for like, you Two know, seconds. whatever they did. Oh, yeah. The little scene where they show him getting slaughtered finally. <laughs> On and, a beach in Mexico, I think. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting, but he's in this. Uh, like I said, Gary Oldman, Carrie Russell. The only other thing I really remember her from is 2012. She's John Cusack's like ex-wife in that. Oh, okay. Roland Emmerich disaster movie. Yeah, that's this uh... is a, a sort of interesting movie, though. Obviously, uh, we open. It's just like a conflict between these humans and apes, and the humans are kind of like, "Oh shit, I didn't even." These are those apes. You know what I mean? Like these are those apes from that bridge ten years ago that fucked some shit up. I'm sure they're locals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did like how the, the apes had just been doing their own thing, pretty much out creating their own society while humans are just kind of like left to try to deal with everything else. And, you know, obviously they're trying to get this dam up and running for electric power because the nuclear power plant was finally running out of power and they're running out of fuel. So the premise to me is like pretty solid on paper when you look at it. You're like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a solid premise for a sequel here. Um, We also get the return of Koba from... uh. Rise. I didn't talk about during Rise, but he was in there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like the lab veteran ape who has a bunch of scars, a scarred eye. And I like to make the comparison of X-Men in this movie. Koba is Magneto and Caesar is Professor X in their struggle for equal rights. Yeah, that's a good call. I mean, I think that is, you know, like obviously they started out getting along and then when conflict develops, they have different philosophies and life on it. So that's a pretty good shout out. Pretty good way to explain it. Now, I did like how, you know, we kind of see Caesar setting rules and having grounds, but due to his relationship with James Franco previously, and I forget James' character's name because it was really. Will, I think it is. Yeah. But. You know, they had a good relationship there, and so obviously they did a good job curing Caesar's relationship with humans over from that, right? You know, he didn't have this traumatic experience like a lot of the other apes did as far as being trapped and living their whole life in bad conditions. So, Well, this is a, this is a lesson that's learned, and I think, again, conquest or battle of the Planet of the Apes, mm -hmm. where Caesar essentially realizes, okay, yeah. Apes are just as bad as humans. Um, people and apes are just, some of them are fuckheads, essentially. Not everybody. Yeah, I like how Caesar basically 
had that flaw, you know, moment where he's like, he trusted Koba because he was an ape. And then he realized yeah. like that wasn't the right, that wasn't the right miss, you know, right option, right decision. And he really goes into kind of breaks it down and has it make sense. Um, but a, definitely a solid addition, really good movie start to finish. It's pretty long. It's a couple hours. It had the best, uh, tagline, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. In this movie, you don't spank the monkey, the monkey spanks you. That's pretty fucking awesome. No, that was actually, that's just from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah. <laughs> the Planet of the Apes bit in that, I remember. Remember that? It's hilarious. Yeah. Die, uh, you super monkey fuck! You should wear that, a t-shirt that says that too, the new Planet of the Apes movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So, the ending was pretty solid there for Rise. It becomes, yeah. it, it almost feels like a small scale, like Kong movie. Well, because they're all in the building there. <laughs> yeah, because they're like having this big fight. It's all CGI. And the CGI looks good in these. Um, obviously, I think it looks best in a war just because they've really refined the process and there's some really good shots that you're just like, damn, like that's really well done. I still think, honestly, it's, I get lost in these movies. Like sometimes I'm like trying to think of, oh man, the CGI looks really good, but like that's because I'm reviewing them and stuff lately. But if I just sit there and watch them, I'll get sucked into them in the story and the characters and it's irrelevant to me that it's CGI because it just, they yeah. do such a good job with it. Yeah, there's only a few moments here and there where like the rendering on the eyes looks a little funny to me, especially Caesar, since we see him close up so much, where that seems a little off. But even then, like, that's only because I was s focused on that, right? Again, I think I the, like the writing and performance of the mocap actors as well definitely helps that. Yeah. So, now the only thing I'm a little worried about with the new one. And I'll just skip to this side quest here for a second is that Andy Circus is not in this at all, which I think is fine. But like, I wonder, was he a consultant on there? Like, if you're going to do a continuation of his family, like, um, it would have seemed pertinent to have him on there just because he, you know, if you look at him before he really crossed over to being a acting and like in his present form, he did a lot of mocap work. Like, he was really, yeah, they really, did, um, so I'm sorry to interrupt. They did. I, was gonna... I watched the, the trailers for this new one, mm -hmm. and it seems like the essentially the Proxima Caesar is he's the king, but he's also the villain. So, yeah, yeah, they're almost going to the um, original Planet of the Apes concept here, right? It's well, they, they're kind fun. of from what I understand in their reasoning of time. I was walking some stuff. The director was talking about it. It's supposed to essentially take place between when the original movies would have been and the last trilogy, 300 years after that. So it's still still before, but like because these original, I think it's in like, like it's way, way, way in the future. Like it's crazy how far it, it's like 37 or something. Like it's, you know, it's like mm -hmm. a thousand or more years, but they got time to do another trilogy and then probably be okay. And maybe just if they went forward going with remakes or reboots entirely, like covering those redoing that style of, uh, the original pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I could see them doing that if they, if they get there and they have a need for it. Uh, any other thoughts on rise or not rise, but, uh, Dawn, um, Koba dying. He does, yeah. uh, does the best Hans Gruber impression I've ever seen. He does. That's awesome. And the fact that Caesar's really contemplating in the moment, like, am I going to kill this motherfucker? And he's like, yeah, fuck this guy. Yeah. Boop. So I think that was well-deserved because for a moment, you really don't know. And I didn't watch this in a while, so I didn't remember. So it was fun yeah. to be like, oh, yeah, there he goes. I've seen all three of these in theaters and even the Tim Burton one. Every Planet of the Apes that's come out since I've been alive, I've seen in theaters. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I saw any of these in theaters or not. I don't think I did. So, um, I did see the Tim Burton one in theaters, but 
I think we saw that together. If I remember correctly, that was, I have a distinct memory of seeing that when mom had a bunko night and I was trying to get us to go see cats and dogs, but everybody outvoted me to Planet of the Apes. You're welcome. Well, I think we did right for you by then. I don't know, because that was a pretty wonky uh, Planet of the Apes. It's Tim Burton. Can't go wrong. Everything after 1999 with Tim Burton has gone wrong, in my personal opinion, to be honest. I don't think I've like enjoyed a single thing he's done since then. We'll see about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm holding out for hope because that seems to have a lot of practical effects. He went back to a style of filmmaking that he seems to be having fun with. You know, for a while, he just seemed to be running out and pumping out movies. But, yeah, I was just being a smart ass with that. I didn't really... To me, his version of Planet of the Apes is pretty forgettable. Like, it doesn't really... I remember the villain being really good, that mean ape guy. I don't know who he, who played him, but like did a great job. Yeah. And I remember Paul Giamatti being an ape. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. And I'm an ape. I'm in the Planet of the Apes, by directed by Tim Burton. That's uh, my best Paul Giamatti I can do off the top. Yeah, fair enough. Now, as we jump over and kind of get into... War for the Planet of the Apes, or War of the Planet of the Apes. War uh, for the Planet of the yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Look, I'm a big Woody, uh, Woody Harrelson fan, right? I think he does, he's a great actor. But for me, knowing that he's, like, fucking vegan and has been forever, like, him playing this asshole that hates animals, hmm. I can't buy his character in it. I have a hard time with it. It's like one of my roles that he's done. Like, I don't hate him in the role, but I just think, like, it doesn't feel authentic to me. See, I just got to think back to Natural Born Killers when he cuts off Robert Downey Jr.'s dick at the end. Yeah, and that's... And uh, I'm all good. That seems like he's a fucked up guy to me. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, yeah I guess that's one way to look at it. Um, Steve Zahn, or Zahn, however you say his name, is Bad Ape. That's pretty... Yeah. Good addition. I really enjoyed him. Like he brought a little bit of comic relief. The last couple of movies didn't really have, and he was good. And his voice acting in that is fucking perfect. Like his just the tone, the articulation, like the fear and mm -hmm. hesitation that he brings to that role. Perfect. I loved it. Yeah, off the top of my head, I I really like him in that thing you do and uh, Joyride. A couple other things, I'm sure. I can't remember. Yeah. What else that guy in? I have to look at his IMDb and like jog my memory, you know? <laughs> so, the Meters. Yeah. So, War is fun. It's a good movie. It's, it's more tragic than fun, but yeah. <laughs> it starts off more fun and then it like just gets fucking dark and depressing because like then you're just seeing like the animal slavery or entrapment that is really just kind of loosely touched on in the first one you know everyone's like oh i came from a zoo or where'd you come from and it's his an family dies and shit yeah brutal only cornelius is left which is again a reference to cornelius from the original movies who's one of the main apes he's married to zira yeah it's, he's in the second one too roddy mcdowell <laughs> Um, Winter is an interesting ape. You get an albino gorilla. Yeah. That just and gives me that... Congo vibes every time I see him. Because the white apes in Congo that are like cannibal crazy people. Amy want to eat human flesh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like this, I feel like Congo should be in universe with this. Uh, yeah. They give Nova's name an origin story. Chevy mm -hmm. Nova? Bossa Nova? <laughs> Chevy Nova? This is like... Excellent! <laughs> yeah. Oh, you gotta love the Feldmaster. Um, there's whipping in this movie. That's fucking wild. Yeah, there's some of that in there. 
Um, the fact that they call like the old followers of what's his name? Koba. Koba's old followers basically is they call them donkeys and they're out there helping like kill their own species. Donkey just, Kong reference. Yeah. yeah. Just to save their own life. And you're like, man, that's fucking dark. Brutal. Um, it's interesting. They, they start developing the like no talking of the virus and like making a, you know, the little girl, that guy, he's killing all his soldiers. Like it's a goddamn zombie plague. Yeah, he is. That was interesting too, because that, you know, at first you're just like, is this kid a mute? Which is very possible, right? It's wouldn't be that unheard of, especially post-apocalyptic space. And then it makes more sense when you consider the original movie, obviously, mm -hmm. because humans don't talk. And then they're sh shocked when he can, he can talk because he can't even he gets shot in the throat and can't talk for most of that movie. He has a thing. And then as soon get your hands off me, you damn dirty. Yeah, the scene where he finally talks and they're like, holy fuck. Damn. That bro is talking. Yeah, that's well, that's why that original is so iconic because it is that's it's I mean, it's a fucking great film, right? Yeah. When you look at it, start to finish. Uh, too bad Charlton Heston was a piece of shit. Yeah, that's uh, and a fucking role model to many for it, too. Yeah, uh, so, so yeah, this movie, uh sort of ends with the defeat of all these motherfuckers and then Caesar succumbing to his wounds. Mm hmm And I like how when Woody Harrelson's character goes, he's like, he's punished. You know, that dumbass picks up that little doll, gets the virus, and then it's just fucking trapped. And Caesar kind of realizes what happens pretty quick. Yeah. And... Doesn't mercy kill him? He lets him kill himself, but he's like, "I'm not killing you," right? So, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. And then the humans, like the war piece, there, like I did, like how they didn't over, over prioritize that as the story element. You know, we just kind of knew that they were coming, and like that part looked great. You know, um, it's kind of like that big battle, all those explosions, and then, you know, kind of at the end, everything's just fucked. And you're like, oh, this is, ends in a dark note. For the third one in a trilogy, when they didn't know if they're going to make more, and as long as it's taken, it's going to skip time, too. You know, like, that ends on a fucking somber note. I mean, not only for the humanity, but for the apes, too, because, like, they're all just fucking coming out of, like, starving and fucking barely getting by, too. They're They're at the Oasis, though, I guess, which is the point. So they're like... About yeah. to move on fully from humans, because I think those were the last real human threats that they were facing at the time. Yeah, that's true. I forget that that after that that last big battle, they do go there before Caesar dies and like dies and sees the Mecca or the promised land that they had talked about that was past the desert where they'd be safe. So. Whatever that place is that Bruce Campbell was shooting that gun in at the beginning of Congo. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, I think as a standalone trilogy, this one's pretty good. Um, it's not like my favorite trilogy by any means, but it's it's a fun watch every couple of years. I'm not like, oh, I got to watch these movies all the time. But I imagine your ranking would be the same as mine, which is just one, two, and three. Yeah, I like I, I like them all, but then if I'm going favorites, that's the order. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, to me, I like Rise just because it was a fresh concept, and then like you kind of see where this all started. The story is uh, so good for Rise, is the thing, and I, I I can see that with Dawn too. But Dawn has a lot different shit going on that Rise is more focused. I think. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and then the supporting cast, you know, like uh, Gary Oldman's very forgettable to be honest in that movie. I'm not gonna lie, he kind of sucks in that role. And that was around the same time he'd been, you know, playing Commissioner Gordon. So I'm like, how do you go from something so good to something so like, eh? Well, it's, I, I don't know. It might just be our expectations because Gary Oldman always plays like fucking Dracula and then, you know, the drug dealer in True Romance. He's always so weird. And when you just see him being, he's not even Commissioner Gordon. He's just a fucking dude. Maybe that's it. But I don't know. I, I was very unimpressed with him in this one. 
he just didn't feel like he was committed to it, right? It just felt like he was even he even he was bored with it. You know, like his speech where he's up there giving that speech, I'm like, God damn it, this feels like a shitty version of the Independence Day speech. Like give me something better than that. Give me somebody who actually believes what they're saying. And I usually like his roles. Like he's in a lot of shit that's really awesome. Like he was just like, eh. Yeah. But they didn't really sell the conflict either. It wasn't like, oh yeah, the conflict between the humans. Like they downplayed that a little bit. Now, one of my favorite parts of that movie is when Koba is fucking around with those two guys. Oh yeah. And he's and he's taunting him and he acts like he's hanging out with them, then he spits the alcohol out after that, and they're like, Go away. And like he's just like, nah. He plays it he plays a very good role in there where he's just trying to fuck with those people. And and I think that was yeah, when he finally goes and like pulls the trigger and then he's empowered and like you see his transformation from like not agreeing with humans to being like, okay, I have the power to get rid of my enemy. And it's pretty yeah, wild. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah, like I said, I'm excited to see where this new one's going to go. It looks like they have a bunch of interesting characters that are references to other characters and shit so um i don't know all the distinct types of apes but whatever caesar was i guess he's is he just like a regular ass chimpanzee that's kind of how they play him yeah i think he is i think that's what he's called in the first one mm -hmm. um but he's a. Uh, the king is that, and then you see, I think it's a Bonobo is what Koba was. Okay. You see, you see one of those two. There's obviously orangutans and gorillas, so it'll be interesting to see what we get for characters and stuff. I always like the orangutans because they're like the more like intellectual and characters and stuff. Yeah, and I honestly haven't watched a trailer for this movie. I've just, you know, quickly looked at the IMDb to kind of see what was you know, what it had to offer. Curious about William H. Macy being in this. I don't recall seeing him in the trailer, so I think you should be able good to check out a trailer. Uh, if you don't want to, if you want to stay spoiler-ish free, watch the first one that came out a couple months ago. The newer one has like a little bit of the plot details, but not like okay. enough that I know what's going on. All I know is that some young ape is going to be opposing the king. Okay, fair That's enough. That's all I can really gather from it, but. I'll have to check those out and kind of get a get a feel for it. Yeah. All right. Well, let us know in the comments what you think of the uh, this trilogy of Planet of the Apes, and if you're excited about the new one coming out. Obviously, we'll review that when it arrives, and we'll kind of give our thoughts on it and kind of see how it fits into Planet of the Apes as a whole and then fits into this new take on Planet of the Apes. This is the 10th Planet of the Apes movie, I guess. Be the um, at least out of the newer stuff, it'll be the first one that'll be 20th Century Studios, not 20th Century Fox. So wild, interesting stuff. All right, well, I think that's all we've got on this one. So hopefully, you enjoyed it. Let us know if we're assholes and we're wrong, and if uh, if we're fucking gods and we're right, let us know that too. I mean, these movies have a, an interesting following and background. I think so. We'll see. Like, I don't know who is diehard fans of this. It's like weird sci-fi people. And I really like sci-fi, so I kind of like feel like I like it more than a little bit more than most people because I like the old ones, too. Yeah, no, I think it's it's a unique trilogy because it's not one that has a huge fan base. Like, I can tell you right now that, like, when I've gone to conventions and done cosplay, I have never seen one in person but I also haven't been going like around a movie release. So is that something we might see at some of the cons after this movie releases, like some of these style of con, you know, cause I don't even see like any vintage throwback Planet of the Apes costumes, which you think would be pretty easy to do at home by now. Shit. I don't know. Yeah. It'd be cool to see some dope Planet of the Apes cosplays. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could look some up. Some people have done them for sure. It'd just be like, yeah, I have never seen one. And personally, yeah, I just, Yep, no, that's something I should probably peruse for and see what that's like out there because it's a it's a big franchise, right? It's a big name. It's got a lot of interesting movies, good movies too, some better than others, but 
Uh, it's still going. So, all right, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.